is life, the world is spirit. Towards the Lord. Amen. We all welcome to this unique Bible study in Jesus' name. We want to uh, please uh, plead with us that during the time we'll be receiving the newcomers and after the choir administrations, please, we want to plead with you. There should be no clapping of hands. Once more again, we are all welcome to the Bible study in Jesus' name. We especially want to welcome our visitors, those that are having a study with us here at the headquarters church, the GCK converts, invitees or visitors here in this place. We want you to signify by raising up your hand. You are coming to be in our midst for the very first time. Could you please signify by raising up your hand? Thank you very much. Want you to stand on your feet. Want to see you. Want to recognize you. Want to bring to you a pastor, a father, and the Lord's special greetings. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. We are also by you. They will give you a paper, a slip, receive it from them, complete the information, then you can give it back to the ushers. You are especially welcome in the name of Jesus. The GS, our Father in the Lord, is happy that you are here with us for the very first time. However, I want me to tell you that you should keep on coming that God Almighty will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. We claim meetings. Mondays like this, we gather for Monday Bible study, a systematic and expository study of the Bible, personally taking our Father in the Lord, the General Superintendent, and the Bible study starts at 5.45 p.m. in all our districts and location churches. Thursdays again, we gather for Thursday revival and evangelism training service. Every Thursdays in our districts and in the locations. I'm also to every third Thursday of the month, we have the power night. The next edition comes up on Thursday, 21st November 2024 at 5.45 p.m. Let us invite others to these programs, our neighbors, our friends, our colleagues, our relations, uh, including the sick, the lame, the blind, the oppressed. Let's invite them to these programs and God will manifest his power Sunday worship service. Every Sunday we have an enriching uh, worship service starting at 7.45 a.m. in all our various districts where we come from. Brethren from service group two will be coming here on Sunday, November 10, 2024 for their worship service. Tuesday leadership meeting tomorrow's November 5th and Tuesday November 12th 2024 all Tuesday leaders will be meeting here at the headquarters church Tuesday leadership development meeting at the time is 5 15 p.m. GCK converts water baptism. The Enugu Crusade converts 
water baptism shall hold next Saturday, November 9th at 9 a.m. We are to please intensify our uh, follow-up efforts and ensure no convert is lost. Our labor shall be rewarded. Ministerial renewal and impact refreshed. The ministerial renewal for November comes up the 16th, while the impact refreshed will be on Sunday, November 17th. All workers, ministers from other churches and professionals are expected to be at the ministerial renewal, while our youths and young adults are to invite their friends and colleagues to the impact refreshed program. Global Crusade with Kumi GCK. This month's edition of our Global Crusade will detain the great escape through faith in Christ. Comes up from Thursday 28th of November to Tuesday 3rd of December 2024. The ministers, church workers, and professionals conference with the team unlimited power for life and ministry will be on 29th November 2nd and 3rd of December 2024 all our workers workers in training and professionals are to attend the conference in our various group headquarters at 8 a.m. on each day of the conference. While the Impact Academy will detain key to success without limits for teenagers, campus students, core members, and young adults will come up on Saturday 30th, November 2024. The program starts at 8 a.m. We should intensify our prayers and publicity for the success of these programs. We want to rise up on our feet as we take our congregational song. We're singing Hymn number 259, hymn number 259, 259. More like the master I would ever be, more of his meekness, more humility, more zeal to labor, more courage. To be true, more consecration for work he bids me to do. More like the master is my daily prayer. More strength to carry cross I must bear. More heinous effort to bring his kingdom in. More of his spirit, a wanderer to win. More like the master I would like and grow more. Of his love to others, I would show more self denial like he's in Galilee, more like the master I long to ever be. Take thou my heart, I would be thine alone. Take thou my heart and make it all thine own. Purge me from sin, O Lord, I now implore. Wash me and keep me dine forevermore.
Today we're going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we're asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We're asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The Fifth Book of Moses, called Deuteronomy. The Fifth Book of Moses, called Deuteronomy. Chapter 22. Chapter 22. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray, and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt in any case bring them again unto thy brother. And if thy brother be not nigh unto thee, or if thou know him not, then thou shalt bring it unto thine own house, and it shall be with thee until thy brother seek after it, and thou shalt restore it to him again. In like manner shalt thou do with his ass, and so shalt thou do with his raiment, and with all lost thing of thy brother's, which he hath lost, and thou hast found, shalt thou do likewise. Thou mayest not hide thyself. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ass or his ox fall down by the way, and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt surely help him to lift them up again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. If a bird's nest chance to be before thee in the way in any tree or on the ground, whether they be young ones or eggs, and the dam sitting upon the young or upon the eggs, thou shalt not take the dam with the young. But thou shalt in any wise let the dam go, and take the young to thee, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days. When thou buildest a new house, then thou shalt make a battlement for thy roof, that thou bring not blood upon thine house, if any man fall from thence. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with divers seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. Thou shalt not plough with an ox and an ass together. Thou shalt not wear a garment of divers sorts as of woolen and linen together. Thou shalt make thee fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture, wherewith thou coverest thyself. If any man take a wife, and go in unto her, and hate her, and give occasions of speech against her, and bring up an evil name upon her, and say, I took this woman, and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hateth her. And lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him. And they shall immerse him in an hundred shekels of silver, and give them unto the father of the damsel, because he hath brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife, he may not put her away all his days. But if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she hath wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shalt thou put evil away from among you. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, then they shall both of them die, both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shalt thou put away evil from Israel. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city, and ye shall stone them with stones that they die, the damsel because she cried not being in the city, and the man because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, so thou shalt put away evil from among you. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. 
but unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death, for as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. For he found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife. Because he hath humbled her, he may not put her away all his days. A man shall not take his father's wife, nor discover his father's skirt. Chapter 23 Chapter 23 He that is wounded in the stones, or hath his privy member cut off, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way, when ye came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against thee Balaam the son of Beor of Pethor of Mesopotamia to curse thee. Nevertheless the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. Thou shalt not seek their peace nor their prosperity all thy days forever. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. When the host goeth forth against thine enemies, then keep thee from every wicked thing. If there be among you any man that is not clean by reason of uncleanness that chanceth him by night, then shall he go abroad out of the camp, he shall not come within the camp. But it shall be, when evening cometh on, he shall wash himself with water, and when the sun is down, he shall come into the camp again. Thou shalt have a place also without the camp, whither thou shalt go forth abroad. And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon, and it shall be, when thou wilt ease thyself abroad, thou shalt dig therewith, and shalt turn back and cover that which cometh from thee. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that he see no unclean thing in thee and turn away from thee. Thou shalt not deliver unto his master the servant which is escaped from his master unto thee. He shall dwell with thee, even among you, in that place which he shall choose in one of thy gates, where it liketh him best. Thou shalt not oppress him, there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother, usury of money, usury of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. Unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury, but unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to in the land whither thou goest to possess it. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it, for the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it would be sin in thee. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. That which is gone out of thy lips thou shalt keep and perform, even a free will offering, according as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. When thou comest into thy neighbor's vineyard, then thou mayest eat grapes thy fill at thine own pleasure, but thou shalt not put any in thy vessel. When thou comest into the standing corn of thy neighbor, then thou mayest pluck the ears with thine hand, but thou shalt not move a sickle unto thy neighbor's standing corn. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim, pray for grace, 
that you will do as you are blanched in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. We want to dip our hands in pockets and wallets and whatever we have brought as our tithes and offering. We want to quickly do that as we continue in the service. Let's dip our hands in pockets and wallets and whatever we want to present to God as our tithe and offering. Let's raise them up and let's pray together. Thank you, God, for this evening Bible study. And thank you for these presentations. We pray that you will receive them from my hands, O oh God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's drop our tithes and offering. As our brethren pass by with their bags.
angry words give all the pain once they're spoken tears and sorrows cannot bring them back again Now bring you choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world. Sky. 
Shores of the Atlantic to the hills of Monrovia, a nation cries out for hope. Forgiveness goes along with freedom. It sets you free so that you are not in bondage anymore. Liberia, land of liberty, where freedom's flame burns bright. But freedom's true power lies not in our history, but in our faith. A kind of forgiveness that also brings freedom from the power of sin. Join Pastor W.F. Kumui at the GCK Crusade and experience the great escape through faith in Christ. When the grace of God comes to you, it makes you to escape the judgment coming on the earth. Featuring guest music minister, Jonathan White. This global crusade with Dr. Kumaway, and because of God's goodness, we're going to see breakthrough. Because of his faithfulness, we'll see breakthrough. Expect that breakthrough as Dr. Kumaway speaks. Reach out and claim that breakthrough. Happening from November 28th to December 3rd, 2024, at SKD Sports Complex, Moravia, Liberia. Time 1600 GMT daily and 700 GMT on Sunday. Join the youth for an electrifying impact session on November 30th at 7 a.m. GMT and get the key to success without limits. Join esteemed ministers and professionals on November 29th and December 2nd and 3rd by 7 a.m. GMT for a transformative session and get unlimited power for life and ministry. Come experience revitalization and equipping for effective ministry personal growth and spiritual renewal. GCK in Liberia. Escape to Jesus. Escape to freedom. Share the hope. Invite someone. Freedom from of Satan. The gospel to everyone. 
GCK Gospel to every creature. Hospitality is not a substitute for holiness. Not only that, sincerity is not a substitute for salvation. Somebody says, you know, I do everything to be sincere. I try to be sincere in my life. That's good, but that's not enough. Nice behavior. I try to behave myself. I try to do the right thing when people are there, when the opposite gender is there. I try to carry myself in an honorable way. My friend, please understand that nice behavior is not a substitute for the new birth. Ye must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And actually self-denial is not a substitute for sanctification. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. That's what holiness there means, sanctification. It's the work of grace that God does in the heart. And only God can sanctify you. Only God can purify you. Only God can make you holy. If you abandon God, abandon His grace, abandon faith, and then by yourself, by self-effort, I deny myself of this. Since I start coming to church, I don't drink, I don't smoke. I try to withdraw myself from anything that will not be right. Self-denial is not a substitute for sanctification. Fervency is not a substitute for faith. I'm fervent. Anything I try to do, I put my whole zeal into it. I sweat. That's all right. But sweating hard will not take you to heaven. Fervent in business, fervent in activity, it's not a substitute for faith, except you have faith in Christ. Because it says, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. If you don't believe the gospel, if you don't have faith in Christ, who came to take our sins away? Are you only fervent, fervent, fervent? That's not enough. Passion. A person is passionate. Passion is not a substitute for purity of heart. Our hearts must be purified by the application of the blood of the Lamb. You know, there are some people that are naturally bold and very aggressive, and they are fearless. They fear nothing. They fear nobody. Even if it's going to bring a devastating consequence on their lives, they fear nobody and they fear nothing. But you understand, boldness is not a substitute for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But you shall receive power, real power, real boldness. After that, the Spirit of God has come upon you. If you have natural boldness, natural fearlessness, you can dare anything, you can do anything that's not a substitute for the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And joy is not a substitute for justification. There are people that they are positive. Anything happening in life, always happy, always joyful, always humorous, almost a plain prank. But that is not a substitute. You must be justified. And the sacrifice of Christ on the cross of Calvary must have that justification effect in your life. The grace of God helping us to do that. When that trumpet shall sound, thank God I will be there. Rise up and surrender yourself once again to the Lord. Present yourself once again unto the Lord. Let what we have heard, let it bear fruit in our heart, bear fruit in our home, bear fruit in our tongue, bear fruit in our action, bear fruit in everything we do, in church, at home, in the office, in the market, everywhere. Let the word of God bear the fruit of holiness in our lives. You have heard it all from our Father and the Lord. Pray 
for these Christian experiences. Pray for salvation. Pray for sanctification. Pray for Holy Ghost baptism. Hospitality is not a substitute to holiness. Pray for this experience. Hospitality is not a substitute for holiness. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Not your ability. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Call upon the name of the Lord. Seek the face of God. Nice behavior is not a substitute to new birth. It's not a substitute to salvation. Ye must be born again. Are you born again? Are you living a clean life? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? It's your name in the book of life. Ye must be born again. Praise to God. Call upon the name of the Lord for this glorious experience. Self-denial is not a substitute for sanctification. Sanctification is the will of God for every believer. Those who are born again, sanctification is the will of God. Pray for sanctification. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people, suffered without the gate. Pray. Pray for this glorious experience. Pray that your heart be circumcised. For without holiness, no man, no man shall see the Lord. Do you want to see the Lord? Do you want to reign with Christ in eternity of joy? Call upon the name of the Lord. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. I want to see the Lord. You want to see the Lord? Call upon the name of the Lord. It's ready to sanctify. It's ready to make holy. It's ready to purify as you call upon his name. Pray. And call upon the name of the Lord. Seek his face. Self-effort cannot please God. Fervency, activity is not a substitute to faith. You must pray to God, Lord, help me to put my, my confidence in the faith of the Son of God. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Tonight, seek him diligently. Seek him with all your heart. Those who seek for him with all their heart, they receive. Tonight you will receive. Give an experience you are, you are longing for. Salvation, sanctification, Holy Ghost baptism, God will grant it unto you. Shall we pray together? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word of God, the child that be given unto us to seek the face of God for these glorious experiences, salvation, sanctification, Holy Ghost baptism. I pray that those who are seeking his faith tonight will receive from God of heaven in the name of Jesus. Lord God of heaven, none of us will go back home as he came to this meeting in Jesus' name. Lord, we are asking that you anoint and empower our Father and the Lord as he teaches us this night. Pray that we will receive and be blessed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for having answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Our Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for your word. 
the Bible, Holy Bible, blessed instruction before leaving the earth. And we pray that the instruction you give us in your word will do good in every life in Jesus' name. And we pray that the necessary preparation that we need to put in place before we leave this world, you give us the earnestness and you give us the sincerity and you give us the spirituality that will help us to be who we ought to be as we come to you finally in Jesus' name. And we're asking that no member of our body, our tongue and other members of the body will lead the whole body to perdition and hell on a final day in Jesus' name. Be with us as we study tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A good, good headquarters. Amen. God bless you. We're coming back to James chapter 3. And uh, we've studied already by the grace of God, chapter 1, verses 1 to 27. And we've studied chapter 2, verses 1 to 26. Now we come to chapter 3 of James. And as you look at verse 1, look at verse 1 there. It says, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater damnation. Look at verse 2. It says in verse 2, For in many things we offend. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle, to control the whole body. The Lord is uh, giving us a such light on our tongue today. The tongue is very important, very essential. What could we do? Where could we go? What progress could we make without the tongue? This little member, the tongue, very essential, very important, very indispensable. But the tongue, even though it can give us progress, with the tongue, we confess that Christ is Lord. With the tongue, we get salvation. With the tongue, we come back. Like I say, I came to the Lord and he said, I am an unclean man. Then the fire touched his tongue and touched his leaves. And then he was sanctified. It's by that tongue we call upon the Lord and we tell him that we surrender, surrender all, and we're sanctified. And when we're baptized in the Holy Ghost, we speak in other tongues. It is the tongue that expresses that other language that we pray to the Lord. It is the tongue that prays to the Lord and says, Lord, this is what I need. Are we preaching the word? Are we telling other people about the eternal life that Christ has provided for us? It is through the tongue. And yet, it is that same tongue that ruined Pharaoh. And he said, who is that God that I should obey him? It is that same tongue that ruined and destroyed Nebuchadnezzar. See, this is the Babylon I built for myself. It is the same tongue that wrecked and ruined Absalom. It is the same tongue that destroyed Ahithophel. It is the same tongue uh, that destroyed Judas Iscariot. So, you might have on this side the tongue positive, the tongue progressive, the tongue prayerful, and the tongue purposeful. On the other hand, you might use the tongue in a wrong way that makes you to, uh, to kind of lose all the privilege the Lord will have given you in life, in church, as well as in heaven. That's why the Lord is giving us uh, instruction today. And if we're having divine such light on our tongues, divine such light on your tongue, that tongue can promote you. That tongue can prepare you for heaven. That tongue can also derail you and destroy you and make you not to have 
the life on high that we need to have divine such light on our tongue we're dividing the message today to three parts number one we're looking at the characteristics of men's tongues without conversion to christ those who are still natural those who are just by themselves they do not have the grace of god or the salvation of the lord they are natural men and women and we have the characteristics of man's tongue without conversion to christ number two number two is the control of mammals big creatures with man's a kind of a manipulating cord or cane a little rod a little cane a little hem a little instrument that man devices and uses to control great great big large creatures number three we're looking at the communication of our little member for commendation or for condemnation the little member that's the little tongue that acts like fire and fire may do something good fire may do something bad little fire that kindles a great conflagration and we have the communication of a little member for either condemnation or commendation we're looking at number one number one is the characteristics of men's tongues without conversion to christ we're looking at once again at james chapter 3 looking at verse 1 it says my brethren is talking to believers and he's talking to believers about the use of the tongue why oh believers need to understand you and i need to understand your tongue can build your family your tongue can break your family your tongue can develop you your tongue can destroy you your tongue can make you progress in life and your tongue can bring you down in life many of the things that we experience and that we ourselves bring upon our lives it is the tongue that does that that's why it says my brethren be not many masters be not many teachers be not many talkers be not many directors be not many people that are always talking and talking we're not controlling our lives we're trying to control the lives of other people it says watch yourself mind your business and think about what you ought to be in life and think about your tongue being used to make you progress in life my brethren be not many masters knowing that we believers shall receive the greater condemnation look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says for in many things we offend all in many things of the tongue we offend strangers we offend all we offend neighbors we offend all we offend our husbands we offend all we offend our wives in many things with the tongue we offend our wives we offend all we offend our leaders we offend all we offend our subordinates we offend all it is the tongue if you kept quiet if you didn't say anything because the words that come out they may be words of deception they may be words of anger they may be words of flattery they may be words of slander they may be words of deception that leads people in the wrong direction because in many things we offend or if any man offend not in word the same is a perfect man if any man offend not in word and the spirit of god controls his heart because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh and as is under control under the control of the scripture under the control of the sovereign lord under the control of the spirit of god if any man 
by the control of the spirit, the power of the spirit upon his tongue, offends not in word. He, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle, control the whole body. The one who cannot control the tongue will not be able to control his mind, his direction in life. Will not be able to control his heart. Will not be able to control the body. Will not be able to control anything. He'll be like a person let loose. He's loose in words. And he's loose to the world. He's loose in words. And he's loose. You cannot control him. The wind drives him here and there. Because he offends in words. And he offends all. But the one that is able to bridle the tongue, the one that is able to bridle the body. We're looking at three things. Look at number one. Number one is the concern for many talkers without mastery over their tongues. Number two is the, condem is the condemnation of misused tongues without caution or control. Number three, number three is conversation with mindful tongues, meaningful tongues consecrated to Christ. Look at number one. Number one there is talking about the concern for many talkers without mastery over the tongue. Uh, you'll see James by the Spirit is concerned Concerned for the tongue of man, the tongue of the believer, the tongue of the preacher, the tongue of the backslider, the tongue of the careless, the tongue of the prodigal. It's concerned about the tongue of everyone. That's why you find him mentioning the tongue or mentioning the speech in every chapter. Every chapter of James. Look at chapter 1. We're reading from verse 19. In chapter 1, verse 19, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak. Slow to speak. Slow to wrath. And there are people, and they pass the first part of a sentence. They have passed the first paragraph of a page. They have read the first page of a chapter. And they begin to talk. Why don't you slow down? Hear it all. No, no things that are still coming on. Be slow to speak and slow to rise. And there are people like David, and they, they are told the parable by Nathan. And then they are, they are wrathful. They get angry. How can somebody do that? Thou art a man. So be slow to speak. And be slow to wrath. In verse 26, it tells us in verse 26, if any man among you seem to be religious, if any woman among you seem to be religious, if any person among you seem to be zealous, fervent, fanatical, if any man among you, anyone among you seem to be religious and bright, let not his tongue. But deceiveth his own heart. How does he deceive his own heart? I'm saved. You are deceiving yourself if your tongue is not under your control. I am sanctified. You are deceiving yourself if your tongue cannot be bridled. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. I am spiritual. I am high spiritually. A self-deception. If anyone does not bridle his own tongue, but deceiveth his own self, this man's religion is vain. You know, it's not a crime to be quiet. Rather, it's a crime to be too loud and to talk all the time, and a tongue wagging all the time. It tells us in chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 19, chapter 2, verse 19. The believers, there is one God that doeth well. The devils also believe 
and tremble. Verse 20, in verse 20, it says, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? And you talk, 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 and there's no evidence you are ever under control. Would you know that when your actions are not under control, your speech not under control, your behavior not under control, your comportment, your conduct not under control, and you are just here and there, I'm born again, I am deeper? No, you are not deeper, you are shallow. You do not have control over your life. Look at chapter 3. In chapter 3, we're looking at verse 8. It tells us in chapter 3, verse 8, it says, But the tongue and no man tame. It doesn't say God cannot tame a tongue. No man tame. The tongue, Christ can tame that tongue. The Spirit of God can tame that tongue, and the salvation of the Lord can give you self-control. But by yourself, and that's how you know the people are just coming to church, you watch them, you say, but why is this man acting like that? Why is this woman talking like this? You cannot uh, understand, except you understand, they don't have the controller in the heart. They don't have the redeemer in the heart. And because the one, the Lord, the authority, the sovereign that can control the heart is not there. That the reason they are the way they are because they by themselves cannot control their tongue, they cannot control their mind, they cannot control their heart, they cannot control the direction in which they go. That uh, the tongue can no man tame, it is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Look at chapter 4. In chapter 4, he tells us in verse 11. Chapter 4, verse 11, he says, Speak not evil one of another. You know the people that go about, they have a story to tell. Uh, they have a war story in their lives. But they look at other people, they're delighted they can have something, a stain, a spot in the life of their neighbor to talk about. And they go about bearing tales. It says, speak not evil of one another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, of his sister, he that speaketh evil of his neighbor, he that speaketh evil of leaders in the church, he that speaketh evil of members in the church, judge and judges his brother, speaketh evil of the law. And it says, he judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law. But he judge. Look at chapter 5, verse 12. In chapter 5, verse 12, it says, But above all things, my brethren, swear not at all. There are people, swearing is too close, too near to their mouth. And they mention the name of God and take the name of God in vain have you done this little thing minor thing yes i did or yes i've not done it i'm thinking of doing it i'm planning or doing it but immediately they swear to god and jesus said don't swear and these people church people church goers church commons members of a denomination, members of a so-called church. They swear and swear and swear above, above all things, my brethren, swear not neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other 
old, but let your yea be yea and be a child of God. I'm going there. Then you go there. Let your yes be yes. Let your nay be nay. Because whatsoever lets ye fall into condemnation. Look at number two here. Number two here. We're looking at the condemnation of misused tongues without control or without caution or control. Hey, let's come back to verse 1. In verse 1, it says, My brethren, my brethren, are you born again? We have the same family, my brethren. Are you born again and the grace of God has taken effect in your life? My brethren, if you are a brother, if you are a sister, you do unto me as you expect me to do unto you. If you are a member of the family of God, you do unto her as you want her to do unto you. And that will put a check on our tongue. That will put caution. That will put control. Because I wouldn't want him to talk to me like that. Not just the word. Not just the word. Not just the tongue. The temper that comes with that word. Not just uh, the temper. The thought that is behind that word. When you talk to the other person, before you talk, understand, he is my brother. She is my sister. And because we are members of the same family we we'll want to check and control what we we'll say it says my brethren be not many masters knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation because God the silent listener to every conversation everything we we'll say and the words that come out he knows the thought behind the word he knows the purpose, the plan, the plot. He knows the hatred at the root of the words that we speak. That is why he says, be not many masters. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, for in many things we offend all. Uh, have you looked at how you lost some important friends? And the fellow said, well, I try to be a friend to him, I try to be a friend to her, but I was always caught down. He caught from above, he caught from beneath. He wants to make him, her, become like his tongue. When you caught the branches and you caught the roots. And because of that, because we are faint in many worlds, because we are faint, we break our families. Because we're pain, we make other people feel this is not a compatible person to live with, to stay with, because of the offense of the word. And then he tells us, by many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, if any man offend not in word, the people that have studied I will speak, a conversation, everything. They say that men speak 25,000 words every day. And when you put all that together, in one week, you can write a volume, a big volume of a book. When you put that together in a month, 25,000 words in a day. And it says, you know, those who have done the study, they said we men speak 30 thousand words in a day you know you wake up in the morning there are things to say and there are things to say to yourself self-talk the things to say to people around you that will spoil their day and before you even go out at all you knock that down with your word you knock the other fellow with your word and then you go after you've gone you see, remembering what you said, you spoiled their day. You spoiled their mind. And they are thinking, 
How, how can a woman, how can a man say this early in the morning to somebody while you're happy and while you're kind of, you know, planning, I'll do this, I'll do that. Then he brings the word, you are down. And then you go to the office. You're on, of the, in the office there, you speak and speak and speak. And as you come back from the office, conversation begins again. You just feel the discomfort of quietness. You cannot be quiet. We need to be quiet. Think about your life. Think about the future. Think about your progress. And think about the things you've lost. Think about your spiritual life. And think about the changes that ought to be made. If you thought about that, you will not feel any discomfort where there is quietness. But it says, it we offend on if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, is a matured man, is a complete man, is a thoughtful man, is a purposeful man, the one that offends not in word. Now, what do I gain? To talk to him and make him angry. When you think like that, you're a thoughtful man, you're a matured man, you're a perfect man. What? It's going to be the result. I should build him up. I should build the family up. I should encourage this young fellow. And I should make his life positive. Now, that's being thoughtful. That's being perfect. That's being matured. But when we speak, as we throw words, as we throw stones at people, now, what do I gain? If I pick up stones and all the houses around in the neighborhood, I break their windows with stones. Throw it there, throw it there, throw it there. Anywhere you are going, you see any stone, look at the stone, spare stone there. You pick it up and throw. What do you gain? Look at all the people around you. The stone of words that will pick up and throw here, shatter his window, throw there, destroy a door, throw it there and control and destroy their temper. They, they become destabilized by the things, by the words we throw. He said that will not be right. He says if we're mature, if we're thoughtful, if we're purposeful, or not be throwing things all around like that. In Romans chapter 2, reading there from verse 20. Romans chapter 2, reading from verse 20, it says, An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and uh, of the truth of the Lord. Look at verse 21. It says in verse 21, Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest not thou thyself. Isn't that where to begin? When you teach yourself that word you are so eager to, you know, push out and send out, swallow that word. Meditate on that word. Think of that word. Apply that word to your own life. Thou that instructs others, don't you instruct yourself? Thou that teaches others, don't you teach yourself? Thou that wants to control others, why do you want to control somebody's life? It's like, you know, uh, you want to control a driver. Do you know where he's going? You want to control the driver. Do you know his destination? You want to control the driver. Do you know his plan? You, when you want to control other people's lives, do you know their purpose in life? Do you know where they want to go? Do you know their plan for the day? Do you know their consecration and commitment? 
hear is what God has called them to do and they want to do that but the fellow that does not know the internal working in the life of a man internal working in the life of a woman and wants to control with words you see somebody very quiet very thoughtful very meditative and you feel the discomfort of his quietness the man is thinking about his deficiency he's thinking about his life he's thinking about what he needs to repent of he's thinking about how to make we right with God. He's thinking about the effect of the word he has had upon his life. And then you burst in. And you say, you're too quiet. What's happening to you there? And then you disturb you dis his way of thinking. And the conviction on him fades up. And before he regains his calm again, before he regains his thoughtful process again, it takes a long time. Why don't you leave people alone and let them direct their lives and let them think about their future and let them think about how to make their ways right with God. Teach yourself thou that preachers a man should not steal. Does thou steal? Look at verse 22. In verse 22, thou that seest a man should not commit adultery. You say, you say, you say, you know too much of what other people should do, what other people should be, what they should not do. And what they should do. You know too much about how to help other people to get to heaven. And you're too quick. But you never think about yourself. That that says a man should not commit adultery. Does thou commit? Does thou abhorrest idol? Thou that abhorrest idols. Does thou commit sacrilege? You talk and talk and talk. You're too much of a teacher, but you are not much about a thoughtful person, about a meditative person. And yours is just to talk and talk and talk and teach and teach and teach and instruct and instruct and instruct. Teach yourself. Apply the word to your life. For that is what will make you make progress on the way to heaven. In Ezekiel chapter 13, reading from verse 22. Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 22. It tells us, it says, Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad. With lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad. Look at that righteous person. He's minding uh, his own business. He's going uh, in the path of rectitude. He's going uh, in the path of purity. And while it's like that, you, you concoct a lie.